This is the Hyundai i10, and it's one of Korea's most popular exports along with Samsung mobile phones. And of course, actually this version of the i10 was released around the same time that Sai released Gangnam Style. Hyundai have updated it recently though, giving it some new bumpers at the front and the back, and adding some extra kit inside. Now, one of the reasons this car is so popular is the price. So it starts from a fiver under £9,000, but if you click up there, you can go to carwire.co.uk, build your ideal car, then you'll get five great offers back from top dealers within 24 hours. So you can compare prices without having to haggle, or from the comfort of your own home. Speaking of comfort, what's it like here in the front of the i10? Well, actually, it may be small, but there seems to be quite a lot of room here. One thing to note, though, is that you can't move the steering wheel in and out. It'll only go up and down. That's the case with all these small cars. But this small car does have some big car features. For instance, this one has a heated steering wheel. It's unusual, isn't it? Another thing I want to show you is that this particular one is the range topper, and so it gets the infotainment screen, and it's actually pretty, pretty decent to use, quite easy to navigate. The graphics aren't the sharpest. The sat-nav, it's okay to use, move things around, zoom and all that stuff as you'd like to, but this system is only available on the top level car. You can actually see my full in depth review of it by clicking up there. If you go for a lesser model, then all you get is a cradle for your mobile phone, and then you can use that for various music and other functions as well, and obviously the sat-nav off your phone. There's some charging points down here, and there's enough space to port your mobile phone in there and hide it away. There's lots of other storage as well, so a couple of cup holders down here, another one for the people in the back. You've got a large glove box there, and the door bins are absolutely massive. Look, hold a big bottle of water, and if you hop into the back with me, you'll see that they're massive in the back as well, look. There we go. It's not bad. And what's also not bad is the space back here. So, look, knee room. Knee room is actually really good for this kind of car. Look at that. Headroom, if I sit up dead straight, get a couple of fingers in between my head and the roof. Someone over six foot probably will find it a little bit tight, but come on, this car is more for carrying kids in the back and they are gonna be more than happy. Also, unlike a Volkswagen Up, this car, has a seat belt for the middle. So you can carry three people, but it is a little bit of a squeeze, as you'd imagine. But one thing I can't complain about is this look, the windows. Can you see, they go all the way down and they're wind down. On this car, they're actually electrically operated. So it's seeming pretty practical for such a small car and that extends to the boot. Once again, don't expect too much because it is quite short, this car, but look, let me just lift this low cover out of the way. But you did see that underneath it, I could fit a large suitcase. But while the boot is an all right size for this kind of car, there's no clever features, there's no tethering points, there's, there's no raceable boot floor like you get on that Volkswagen Up. It's just, it's just there. There is some area under here for your space saver, spare wheel, but yeah, it's just a space. You can of course fold the rear seats down, but because there is no raceable floor, you do get this ridge here between the boot area and the seat back. So if you wanted to, well, I'll show you now, put an item in like that and it was really heavy, it'd be a bit of a faff to push it all the way to the front of the car. And then it would slide back like that. Now, if you click it there, you can see more on this car's practicality. In my detailed practicality video, in that I'll show you just how much stuff I could squeeze into this car's boot, what it's like with three adults in the back, and just how easy it is to install a baby seat. Okay, that's the walk around bit dealt with. Now it's time to hit the road to see what this car is like to drive. This little i10 is nice and easy to drive in town. So the suspension does a good job for a small car at dealing with bumps. The controls are light. The gear shift in forward gears is nice. You'll see why I said that later in the video. And the brakes. Well, the brakes are a bit odd because you touch the pedal, nothing really happens. Then you touch it a bit more and then, yeah, they feel a little bit jerky. It's a bit of a shame, that's the only annoying thing, because otherwise, it's a great little car for town work. It helps that you've got good all-round visibility, the view at the back's pretty good as well. And you can see for yourself by clicking up there to join me for a 360 degree passenger ride video. Now you might think that a car of this size would really struggle on the motorway, and actually, it feels a lot more planted than you think it would. The issue comes with the engine, so if you have the one litre engine, yeah, it's going to struggle at speed. Even this 1.2, you do need to drop it down a few gears if you want to overtake someone. And when you start to rev it, 
makes quite a bit of a racket. You also notice a lot of road noise coming from the tyres as well. Not too much wind noise, but that road noise does echo around the cabin. You can tell you're in a cheaper car when you're driving this thing at speed. In terms of economy, it's all right though. I'm getting 48 miles per gallon out of this 1.2. Cheap little small cars like this aren't designed to be thrown around corners. <laughs> this i10 doesn't fall over when you chuck it into a bend. It does seem to run out of grip and want to run wide, but that's to be forgiven. It's good enough in the way it handles that when you go on a twisty road, you don't feel out of your depth. I'm actually quite surprised. It can be good fun trying to drive this thing on its door handles, actually. <laughs> all in all, it's quite a surprising little thing, this. It's a lot better than you think it's going to be. Now then, it's time for the car wow five annoying things about this car. I really like the way that Hyundai seamlessly matched the colour of the parking sensor to the rest of the bodywork. You, you wouldn't even know it was there. Not. The door handle sticks out so far that when you try and use the seat height adjuster, you end up rubbing your arm on the handle. Ah, it's friction burn. This car's manual is almost as big as the car itself. I mean, look at that, it's insane. It'd take you as long to read the Torah, the Bible, and the Quran as that lot. Though, to be fair, some of that is in multiple languages. For improved economy, the SE Blue model is up to 30 kilograms lighter than the normal car, thanks to various weight-saving measures, such as removing the spare wheel. So I'm not entirely sure that's a good idea. Sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to get the car into into reverse. There we go. <laughs> Thankfully, this car has plenty of cool features, which helps make up for all this. Here's five. The air conditioning system on this car is really powerful. Turn it all the way up, and it's like standing in a refreshing Arctic gale, which is handy on a day like today when I'm sweating like a polar bear in a sauna. All i10s have rear doors, and you can get electric rear windows. Plus, they go all the way down. I know about the entry-level car, you can choose between red, blue and grey for bits of interior trim and the seat panels. There's a little slot up here for the seat belt so that it doesn't snag when you fold the rear seats down. And like other small cars, you get a footrest for your clutch foot. That's good, isn't it? If you click up there, you can go to carwow.co.uk for more information and to compare offers on the Hyundai i10. So then, what's my verdict on this car? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should shortlist the Hyundai i10. It's a really good small car. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it and click on our logo to subscribe to our channel. Also, click on the video windows for more car wow videos.